Hey guys, and welcome back to the vlog. I'm Janelle, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm just here in the, what we call the YouTube studio, and I was doing some product photography this week, and I thought I would show you just a little bit of behind the scenes, kind of like the equipment that I'm using, the setup that I have, just in case that would be helpful for you. So this won't be overly helpful if you're taking pictures of woven wall hangings. This is more if you're taking pictures of smaller items. So even like mini woven wall hangings, but like on sort of a flat surface. So anyway, I'm going to flip all this around and show you what I've got going on. I'm just going to turn this now. So it's going the right way. Um, but this is the light that we use. It's the Godox SL60W. Um, you can find it on Amazon. I'll stick some links in the description box below for you. And then we have this newer um, soft box on it. It's nice and bright as you can see. And this is what I use for all my YouTube videos as well. So all the top down stuff that you're seeing, this is the one and only light that we're using. And then we do use a reflector on the other side just to sort of brighten it up, of course. Um, yeah, we actually just ordered a second one of these with a different soft box. So once that gets here, I'll show you that sometime too. Um, but these are a great light, they're LED. Um, they have different <laughs> adjustments on the back. So you can see I've got it at 100% right now. When we're filming the tutorials, I have it only at about, I think 60%. Um, so yeah, there's just different options depending on what you're doing. So then, we have a five in one reflector, which I actually took the reflector off of, Let's see if I can focus here, um, and put it over there. So I'll explain that after. So right now I just have the sort of, you know, translucent, I guess, um, diffuser in front of the light. So even though the light has a diffuser, I am double diffusing it and I've got this space in between the two lights just to really soften it because I want a soft and even light. So then over here, where normally I would kind of fill um, this corner because our light is coming from this direction, I want to kind of um, soften the shadows that will be happening over here and sort of bounce some of that light back without creating super harsh shadows. So I have just like a piece of foam core, you can pick these up at the dollar store, um, and I have it sort of folded. So normally I would just use that on its own, but I was finding it wasn't quite enough. So I just took the cover from the reflector and draped it over top of my um, foam core to create more of a reflection. Of course, it's not gonna reflect quite as evenly because our reflector here is all crinkled and stuff and I could have done a better job, but anyway, it didn't really matter. So then the next thing I have is this is literally a piece of like particle board or maybe even fiber board is a better word for it. It was out of the back of a picture frame and I literally just painted it with a flat white primer. So it's not even paint, it's just primer because that's what I had, but it's super flat. So you can see like it's, it's really not reflecting anything. Of course it's white so it will reflect a bit, but it's as flat as I can get in terms of paint. Then down here, this is literally just a tile from the tile store. So I wanted, so if you guys remember, and I'm just gonna turn around here to show you. I made this backdrop a while ago um, with some like plaster and stuff. And while I do, I like the idea of it, um, I couldn't get it quite the color I wanted. It's much more blue. It's much more in your face than I kind of, wanted it like I yeah I like the idea of it but it's maybe too busy for me personally so I showed that in a vlog a little while ago so anyway so then I went to the tile store and instead picked up this tile what I love about it is that it is sort of a kind of like it's, it's just a ceramic tile or maybe it's porcelain maybe it's porcelain I don't know but the surface of it has a bit of a concrete vibe but not a cold blue, so not like a bluey undertone gray. Um, it has more of a warm undertone, which I really like. You can see too that the, the pattern in it, if you will, is quite subtle, which I also really like. Um, it's just softer, and so I think this is more suitable for what I'm doing. 
I think that other backdrop I just showed you would be good if there was some separation between the object and the backdrop. So for instance, if I had that busier backdrop here and I was taking a picture of something here and I had my f-stop nice and low so that would be all softened, I think that would work a lot better. Anyway, uh, moving on, I have my Sony a7S II. We also have a small HD monitor on it, which comes in really handy when you're using, especially when you're using a uh, manual focus lens, which is what I have on it right now. So we have this, I don't even know the brand honestly, but we have this 50 millimeter prime lens and it has an f-stop of as low as 2.8. And I'm just trying to, just trying to see if I can see the, Brand. Anyway, it is actually a lens that was on a camera that my parents have, like a film camera that my parents have had like my entire life. And so all we did was we bought a little fitting so that we could use it on our Sony cameras. So then, um, so right now I have like this little needle set up and I just kind of wanted to show you what I'm doing here. So on my, um, on this particular lens, I do have to change the f-stop manually. So I'm gonna put it down to 2.8. Um, and this is obviously I'm filming screens, so they're not gonna come out as great. So you, here you can see that we're kind of blown out here. <clears throat> what I love about the HD monitor though, is that there's a few different things you can look at on it. So this is showing me um, like my exposure. So it's red, meaning it's a bit blown out in those areas. So then I can bring down my ISO a little bit. And I know that like, if you've never done photography before that you're probably just like, what are all these words? But this is just like kind of, I'm just telling you what I'm doing. I'm not doing a lesson here, but anyway, um, what I also love about this HD monitor though, is that you can see, so on this particular screen, you can kind of see, um, let's see if I can focus here. You can see where you are focusing on and I'm not sure it's gonna come through as well on here. But right now, um, you know, I'm not focused on the needles and as I bring it into focus, it almost has these little lines that get emphasized when you are in focus. And then this, oh, I'm in the wrong screen. Oh yeah, and then this is just our regular view. So um, so yeah, I will throw some of the edited pictures in here just so you can see what I came out with. And one really important thing when you are taking product photography, if you're using like an actual DSLR or in my case, a mirrorless camera, you wanna set your white balance if you're taking pictures of a lot of different objects, but kind of in the same setting, if you set your white balance, um, that's going to make the editing process a lot easier. Anyway, again, this isn't a true lesson or anything. I just kind of wanted to show you a setup just in case you've ever wondered how to achieve a photo like that. So if you didn't have, let's say, you know, a big light like this, you could definitely like do this in front of a window I would highly recommend getting something like this five in one reflector and um, putting that in front of your window as well to really soften the light. And you'd have to obviously be very particular about the time of day you chose. Um, but as you can see, like that's, this setup is giving us such a pretty lit area. It's very soft. I also, I'm just gonna flip this around. Actually, no, I'm not. What I've also discovered that, um, will make your life easier if you're taking product photography like this is not using a crisp, clean white backdrop. Here is fine. We've got that separation between our objects and the backdrop. You can see the light on the backdrop here is really even because of the way this is all working together. But when you have a white base, I personally struggle with, um, getting the lighting right in that scenario and getting the correct kind of white surface, especially when you're taking really small stuff and you don't have it propped up. Um, but anyway, you're just gonna, it's a lot of shadows. Whereas something like this, with all this pattern going on, it actually disguises shadows really well, which I really like. The other setup I had, so I'm just gonna take these needles and this drift right away. 
The other setup I had was actually for um, wool. Um, this isn't the exact setup I had for those photos. So I think it was tipped up a little bit, but can you see just how, like how, like it looks so good. I love that. And, and so one thing I've learned recently is just like, don't overcomplicate lighting. Um, that's why I've just got the one. Like I said, we did get another light to kind of be able to light different scenarios, but, um, yeah, that's what I'm up to. I did this early this week. I took all new photos of my wool because at the time I was using like my supplier's photos and I really just wanted to have my own to give it that like more custom look to make sure that uh, the colors are more true um, because when you edit the color yourself, you can have the actual object sitting right in front of you and make sure that that color is close as close as possible. So yeah, I realized I should have explained why this is called a five in one. So. This being a diffuser is one option. Then you have the silver side reflector for a second option. You also have a white side so you can flip this cover inside out and you sort of have this soft white, it's like a reflector versus diffused. And you also have the gold side and then of course, I mean you do have the back side. I think that's what makes it five in one is you have the, the black side as well. Um, so yeah, super handy. Okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, this is my second time recording this because I had something on my face. Need like a mirror behind me at all times to make sure I don't. But anyway, I'm not a photography expert by any means, but I have learned so much and Cody's a big part of that because he is so good at like researching the technical sides of things and I just like don't have that much patience for that research step, so he usually, researches things and then teaches me <laughs> after. But anyway, I feel like I have a good eye for photography. So that's kind of my strong suit. So we make a good combination, a uh, good team. But anyway, I've learned this stuff over time and good equipment, don't get me wrong, definitely ups your game, but it's not necessarily necessary. Like if you are just getting started out, don't overwhelm yourself. Like you might want to start with a you know, like if you have an iPhone 11 Pro or higher even, um, that is a great place to start. So maybe invest in a smaller light or in even in just like this five in one um, reflector and diffuser, something like that. Hang on. You guys, I'm literally staring at the most smudged camera ever. But I'm not starting over again. Is that better? Okay. Um, you know, you could start, like I said, with a reflector slash diffuser and put it in front of a window and set something up on a table. Like you can get really scrappy when it comes to photography. And I think the more that you just do it, the better you get like everything else. Um, and then you could even, if you're using your phone, for instance, to take your photos, you could use Lightroom mobile. And I believe that is a free app and you can buy presets as well to use in that app. So there's so many options now for how you can like start your product photography journey. You know, this, um, you can get a tripod that fits an iPhone. Like there's so many options and yeah, I hope you guys have found this interesting. If you've enjoyed seeing this sort of behind the scenes, um, let me know in the comments below. Do you want to see more stuff like this? Do you have photography questions I might be able to help you with? Um, do you want to see editing? I don't know. You guys tell me. <laughs> and if you like this video, please hit that like button, subscribe, and click the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. This video is brought to you by the Spruce and Linen Shop, where you can find weaving looms, kits, tools, and supplies. Link in the description box below.